the first screenplay that I got was written by Liz Hanna, and it was really centered on Catherine Graham and the event of the publication of the Pentagon Papers, what part the Post played in that. Um, and it was unusual because it was focused on her. I was familiar with the stories about the Washington Post from Alan Pakula's uh, All the President's Men, where she made a brief but fleeting uh, appearance. And I really didn't know very much about her. Nora Ephron had told me that her, her autobiography was one of the great books of that part of the century, and uh, that I should read it. And Liz's script sort of had a, a flavor of that time. It's, I've found incredibly compelling, and a story not told. Early in her life, she was not the confident Catherine Graham that people came to know as the first head of a Fortune 500 company. You know, she was someone very unsure of herself and not born to m manage a major company. Or and and also, she was the product of her time, where women weren't expected to do much outside the realm of good works, uh, good child raising and household keeping. Um, it's hard to really uh, imagine how different that time was unless you lived through it, and I, and I did. So I was on the cusp of this, the rising uh, opportunities for women, and I certainly benefited from, from many of them. But she was in the vanguard of all of that and was not completely comfortable with taking the reins of leadership. One of the things that I think is the strongest about this film is the way, is the beauty of it. Of it. Because it's a, a film that takes place in offices and at dinner parties. And how to make that interesting is what Janusz has brought. How to make that compelling and in a way propulsive to make the uh, story so you can't wait to see what happens next. I think that just how he's arranged where to be, I think that's Stephen, obviously. But together they work seamlessly, those two. They see with the same pair of eyes. And um, he's quite a character, Janusz. I've never worked with him. I knew him <laughs> just from having dinner, I think, a couple of times. And he was a wild man, but he's so focused and uh, inventive. I think he's done us a great favor, all of us, us actors. At that moment, they could have lost everything. And the, the uh, owner of the paper, the publisher of the paper, Catherine Graham, had to decide if she was willing to, to jeopardize her family's legacy the paper, thousands of jobs, if, um, if they were shut down. Our movie takes place over the course of two or three weeks only, but it's enough time to get a snapshot of where this woman and all women fell in the line of, in the line of decision makers. Uh, and how there just weren't very many women at all in any positions uh, of power anywhere. And I, I shouldn't even use that word, power. It's a matter of um, moving history, changing history. There were very few women in business, very few women in law. There was no one on the Supreme Court. There was uh, women were still a little bit invisible at that point in time. And the focus of history came to rest on this particular woman's shoulders.
it's kind of subversive how multiple stories are told at the same time through this the narrative of this his, historic moment and the um, march to justice and and really her taking a stance at a time when it was very difficult for her to, to do that because she was not only doubted by her adversaries, but also by her friends. And it's a particularly lonely thing to do, to, to try to stand up under those circumstances. But everybody in this film does that. Every single person has risk uh, attached to the decision that they make. Um, and that, more than anything, is what I think we'll, people will feel, how just ordinary people can really move the needle in history and, and change the course of history. Tom is a, um, he's, everyone knows, you know, he's got the reputation of being the nicest guy in Hollywood. And he's very nice, but he's also really smart. He's crackerjack smart. He's, and that's, that's a thing that's just, I think probably he shared with Ben Bradley. It's such an attractive quality how, how just a few steps ahead of everybody he is in the room. Um, he, he really uh, drives the scenes that he's in. And he also, that sort of crackling uh, wit and the, the demanding part of that personality that, that wants more, more, more from everybody. It's very sexy. And uh, and Tom, <laughs> you know, I think it's uh, people will be surprised that he's he's that. Always, always admired his his films, but I was never asked to dance before, and so I was just thrilled that he was going to uh, direct this and. I was completely, really, completely unprepared for how free he is as a filmmaker. He's so in command of his art that it's just, I won't say it's effortless because he works very hard and thinks very hard, but it's, it's like play. It's like the absorption of a kid. He is completely, free. Uh, it's improvisatory, his, his filmmaking, which shocked me. I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I thought he would, you know, have his sort of way that he liked to do things. But, I mean, we came in there, no rehearsal, no rehearsal. That really shocked me. <laughs> you just go in and start shooting. And then he'll just mix everything up. He says, you know, you know, no, this is, uh, I'm going to do something different here. We're going to, we're just going to toss this up and start in a different place. And it was just so uh, spontaneous, really thrilling. Part of it was our excitement, just as a, a gang, to be working on this material, terrific script. Everybody has their moment. Everybody shines. Everybody was invested in making it, in making it work. And when you get great, great actors, and these are great actors, all sort of pulling the oars of a, a ship, and it just goes faster and faster. It's just very, very exciting. Very exciting to be in the room. I think that fed Stephen too, and he was less tired at the end of the day than he was. <laughs> At the beginning, you know, he's just, boom, jazzed. It was very, very exciting. Hey, Vali here. Did you like the video? Did you know it was based on a book? Hollywood often turns to novels and non-fiction books for movie ideas, but sometimes the films are so popular that they overshadow their source material. Here are some famous movies you might not know were based on books. Die Hard was based on the book Nothing Lasts Forever by Roderick Thorpe. Full Metal Jacket was based on The Short Timers by Gustav Hasford. The There Will Be Blood story was taken from Oil by Upton Sinclair. Ben Affleck's The Town was based on the book Prince of Thieves by Chuck Hogan. 
What's your favorite movie based on a book? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.